Snipe are waders, characterised by a long slender bill that they use to probe in the mud to catch invertebrates. Hence they are found in wetlands and marsh areas. And this bird that we're looking at is called the, the Japanese snipe. In Australia, we would refer to it as Latham snipe. Snipe belong to the order of sandpipers or Scolopacidae. And the plumage of a snipe is fairly plain, fawn with a little black. There's some barring. And this combination gives them good camouflage, otherwise known as cryptic colouring. There are nearly 30 species of snipe found throughout the world. And this snipe that we're looking at, or Latham snipe, is a member of the genus Galenago. And the reason I put this early is to distinguish it from the Australian painted snipe, which is a completely different genus and unrelated to the Latham snipe that we now want to review. This snipe breeds in the northern areas of Japan on the island of Hokkaido mostly. The chicks are precocial and once fledged they fatten and then fly to Australia, mostly coming in from the north along the east coast and down even to Tasmania. This trans-Pacific flight from Japan to Australia is a phenomenal feat, taking place along the East Asia Australasia flyway. Most of the birds coming to Australia go on to the coastal areas where there is an abundance of marsh and wetlands. But some of the birds do go inland and we're going to look at these two different locations in this video. Here in the morning at a coastal wetland in the Hunter Valley, the snipe move out of the reeds with the light coming down towards the edge of the lagoon. The numbers increase. It is not quite sunrise yet. As they come out from the reeds, they will just spend a little bit of time on the foreshore, preening, stretching, some catching a little bit more sleep before they begin to explore the perimeter of the lagoon. As you can see, compared to other waders, the Latham snipe is a small bird, only approximately 16 centimetres, with a relative large, long, straight bill. And typical of waders, most of these birds get on well with one another, despite the fact that they are all feeding in the same area, yet their feeding habits are different. So a surface feeder, or a bottom feeder, is quite content to share the same space with the mud probing snipe. They continue to move out of the reeds onto the mud, and here they develop the typical sewing machine type action of waders. And as you watch the snipe, you can see sometimes they will probe, but many times at this point, they are just going onto the surface or down just to the level of the feet, not probing deep into the mud, suggesting that they are after different varieties of food. Obviously with probing, we immediately think of worms, but here they are feeding, but not pulling on thread-like structures. The water is shallow. So when not probing, the food they're taking is most likely insect larvae from the shallow water. Latham snipe are isomorphic. I cannot tell a male from a female in Australia. The interesting thing at this site, as you can see, there are good numbers. And overall, this is in the peak of summer of 2023. I was amazed at the numbers. Previous years, I've only ever found two or three. And then I always considered myself lucky to even see them. But January, February of 2023 had an amazing number. I counted up to 90 birds at this site. I'm uncertain why there was a big influx into this lagoon. As the sun rises, so the birds move out into the lagoon itself, looking for the mud banks, and they will go also around the perimeter of the lake often using flight to go between one feeding area and the other. As the time goes by, so the large group will break up into smaller feeding groups, mostly around the perimeter of the lagoon.
Here with a solitary bird on the edge of the lagoon, we can see a typical worm extraction. It's a deep probe with a slow extraction, trying to bring the whole worm out intact. The binomial name for Latham snipe is Galenigo hardwicki, and the common name, as mentioned, is Latham snipe. So we have these two names, Latham and hardwicki, attached to this bird. The genus name Galenago is a historical term used to describe snipe, in particular the common snipe, and Galenago Galenago is the common snipe of Europe. Just a few incidental things about the naming of these birds. John Latham himself never came to Australia. He was an English physician with an interest in ornithology and taxonomic classifications. And seeing the importance of the Linnaean system, decided that he would get in first and name as many species as he could in honour of himself. This included other Australian species, for example, the sulphur-crested cockatoos and the emu. Fortunately, he was pipped at the post. I say this because Latham himself had never visited Australia. He made an enormous contribution to ornithology in his book Synopsis of Birds. But I suspect the snipe had previously been described in Japan and the unfortunate naming of this as Latham snipe relates to the fact they didn't understand the migratory pattern of birds, not knowing that the same bird was found in Japan. Latham got his information about Australian birds from authors who had been in Australia, like Governor Phillip. But his main source of knowledge of Australian birds came from the Watling drawings. Watling himself was the Scotsman, a renowned artist who unfortunately had to go to Australia as a convict, for his art was not as good as he would like it to have been, for he was caught as a forger. During his time in Australia, Watling, he made many paintings and drawings, and these became what is known as the Watling Collection. Unfortunately, they have been lost, but certainly they did fall into Latham's hands, and all Latham's descriptions of Australian birds are based on the Watling drawings. The species name Hardwicki is also named after a person, another English ornithologist. Thomas Hardwicki was a soldier who was posted in India, where he remained for 45 years, and during this period, he collected many zoological specimens. In addition, he got local Indian artists to paint mostly in watercolour and do superb illustrations, and his final collection of commissioned works was 4,500 paintings, and these are still available within the British Museum. And Latham and Hardwicky were both members of the Royal Society and both have their names honoured in multiple species. As this snipe yawns, note the distal part of the upper bill. It bends. This is called rhynchokinesis. And this little distal movement allows the bird with its bill in mud to just open the tip and take the prey without using a lot of energy. Rhynchokinesis is a common feature of all sandpipers or scolopacidae. A nighttime shot. You can see these birds feed both day and night. The interesting thing about the daytime feeding is that it's only of a morning and an evening at this site on this coastal wetland. Field identification of Latham snipe is generally fairly easy because it is a large snipe. But we also have the pintailed snipe and swinehose snipe. These have a shorter tail, all have a russet tail, but with the Latham snipe, the tail projects well beyond the body of the bird and it is the largest of the snipe. So now we're going to look at one of the inland wet areas where we see Latham snipe. I've set up this hide at this dam mainly because I wanted to photograph the red-tailed black cockatoo. And you can see this video on our YouTube channel. And the red-tailed black cockatoos are a spectacular bird. I knew that they were coming in because there was no water around for maybe 12k and there was a large flock of them in a tree and I immediately set up the hide at the dam. And encouragingly, I also found that other birds were coming in in abundance. Things like the blue bonnets. And then 
The most important for this video of all of these is the snipe. In contrast to what we have seen at the coastal wetland, this snipe was a solitary bird. The foraging pattern of this snipe out in western New South Wales is identical to what we saw in the coastal wetlands, probing in the soft mud around the edge of the dam, feeding on invertebrates. When the raven flies in, the snipe feels a little bit threatened because the raven is so big, but otherwise it gets on well with other birds. The little mudlark, or the peewee, flutters above the snipe. This is an attempt by the peewee to make the snipe drop the worm and hopefully get a free feed. The eye of a snipe is located far more superior on the head than any of the other sandpipers and some observers believe it doesn't have to look so much for raptors because of this. In comparison the Australian painted snipe has a lower positioned eye. Here out in the arid zone one of the birds that's really responsible for warning other birds about raptors are the miners. And this is the yellow-throated miner. And when you hear a flock of birds calling like this, it's a warning signal. And look at the snipe. He walks back away from the foreshore up into a little depression. Now the Latham snipe is relying purely on his camouflage technique for concealment from the raptors. Note again how the eye is positioned high on the head. Again, disturbed by a larger bird. And look, another little wader, a black-fronted dotterel, wandered by. Both happy and content, working the same dam for food. And you can tell it's Australia, with these kangaroos hopping about. This shows the relative size of the snipe, and how small it is. And when you think of the flight, with radio tracking of the Japanese snipe beginning in 2016 and then going up to 2020, we find that many birds fly to Australia direct. Birds in Japan were fitted with transmitters. They flew direct from Japan to PNG, a short stopover and then down into Australia. They covered this huge distance of 7,000 kilometres in between three and five days. Interestingly, it was a female who did a direct flight in three days, the fastest of all. Another feature about the migration that I find really interesting is that they fly to Australia. Very few birds are sighted in the wetlands around PNG, even though they do stop over there. The same in Indonesia. The odd bird is found, but overall the migration is specific to Australia. As to why this is the case, I regret I do not know. But I suspect it's just an inbuilt geolocation mechanism, more so than any feeding. Earthworms are oligochaetes, and all the worms we've seen these birds catch are fairly smooth on the outside. In other words, they are just like earthworms or round worms. They have a ceramic cavity and the worm moves with its ability to contract and then relax. And it burrows through the mud using this technique, picking up organic material that it swallows through a mouth. It does have a ceramic cavity and then an excretory mechanism. So these birds, put their bill into the mud and feel for movement. If the mud is dense and the movement is right at the tip, they can't open their bill. So with the movement of rhynchokinesis, they just expand the tip of the bill, grasp the worm, pull it out, and then feed. Snipe feet have three toes forward and one rudimentary toe backwards without webbing. An interesting comparison to this snipe feeding out west in comparison to the coastal wetland feeding birds, is that it fed during most of the daylight hours. There was a temporary roost under the shade of a tree during the heat of the day at lunchtime. I wasn't able to record whether it was there at night, but certainly its feeding hours during the day are much longer than what I experienced with the coastal birds. I will show you a quick clip of the painted snipe. As you can see, there's a huge difference. The eye is lower. It has painted colors on it greenish legs. It is rather reclusive. Another bird with a straight bill that can be mistaken for a Latham snipe is the Dowager. This is a rare visit to Australia, but it does have the straight snipe-like bill, but it is a darker bird. As the southern hemisphere winter approaches, so the snipe 
wants to return back to Japan for breeding. On behalf of the Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. If you hit the like and subscribe button, you will get notification of further releases of Australian Birds in the Wild.